Well, we say goodbye to 2022. It's another year. It's another 11-win season and another bowl win for the Alamo Crimson Tide. Locked on Bama, your daily podcast on the Alabama Crimson Tide. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, everybody, and welcome back into Locked On Bama. Luke Robinson, that's me, Jimmy Stein, that's him. Jimmy, how are you today? I am awesome. This is my first Big 12 championship. <laughs> I'm sorry. And for those who don't know what my opening line was about, mm-hmm. whoever is like the vice president of the Sugar Bowl committee or whatever the hell that guy was, <laughs> he was drunk as a bicycle. Let's just go ahead and get that out there. And... <laughs> He said he had to look at his paper like several times to say something. So he was like, I would like to congratulate. He was almost like, congratulate? I'm here to congratulate somebody. The Alamo, I mean, Alabama Crimson Tide, and he did it twice. And nothing, nothing about New Orleans is associated with the Alamo, to my knowledge. <laughs> I thought he said Ala- Alabama. <laughs> I thought the second guy butchered it too, but hey, I hey, I butcher hey, I, I, I butcher this show every day. So yeah, I mean, look, hey, huge big time win for Alabama, forty five to twenty over K State in the Sugar Bowl. It wasn't look, it wasn't a flawless performance. I mean, we gave up an eighty eight yard touchdown. It's like the longest uh, play from scrimmage in Sugar Bowl history, or something bananas like that. Which I'm sure uh, is was. Ezekiel Elliott's 85-yard touchdown rush against us there in 2014 or whatever. Um, So at first I was like, here we go again. This is going to suck so bad. I was dog cussing Pete Golding. I wasn't really mad at Bill O'Brien yet. I was mad at Bill O'Brien because we just stay mad at Bill O'Brien. But um, the defense finally came around a little bit. And and I think Kansas State uh, eventually just looked across the way and said, they're so much bigger, stronger, and faster than us. We're going to have to go for it. We can't take field goals. And then when we got ahead, they were like, we better get a field goal while we're down here because we're not going to get down here very much. So um, it was a just a sublime performance from Bryce Young. Uh, I was on Twitter saying, hey, number nine is our quarterback, not Jordan Battle. Um, Bryce Young is the best player to ever play at Alabama. I believe that. Some people think I'm a prisoner of the moment. I get it. I understand I would go to bat for Bryce Young all day, every day. His speech accepting the Most Valuable Player Award only solidifies that. Um, His play today certainly solidifies that. It's a bowl record for Alabama five touchdown passes. He he was uh, started out one of four, and then at the end of the day, had over 300 yards passing and only six incompletions altogether. So he missed only three more passes altogether. Um, The guy is just ridiculous. He'll be absolutely missed horribly next year um i'm looking forward to a new year we'll get to that i'm looking forward to a new year because i think we need some new blood in this program both at the coordinator position and and at some positions of leadership but bryce young is a dude that uh he is he's alabama's all-time first team qb if you ask me well i certainly don't disagree with that uh it, it would be my strong opinion that he's the best quarterback that's ever played at alabama uh he'll he should be the first pick in the draft we have four months to talk about that here on the show. I look forward to talking about the NFL draft for four months on the show because I love the draft. And I, I'm so just just on top of the world that the first pick in the draft is very likely to be Bryce. Uh, you know, one, one thing about that, though, one thing the world seems to hate or America hates or, or the sports world hates is the four month coronation. So you watch, Luke, it, it's going to be some of it's going to be brutal because. Because they 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 tear you down. So so for the next four months, we're also going to hear about why Bryce shouldn't be the, the first pick. Uh, because for whatever reason, these preordained conclusions bore people. That's why the wrong guy wins the Heisman sometimes. But uh, really happy for Bryce. He's so deserving of what today was for him. And uh, as far as the game goes, and we need to talk about that today and and really the rest of the week. Um, I saw it as almost three games or three acts, like it's like it's a play. And in the first act was Alabama's slow start. 
and uh, in, in maybe it's 11 a.m., maybe it's New Orleans, maybe it's because Kansas State's good. They did beat three top 10 teams. They did win the Big 12. This was – I know the final score, and I know how the game played out. Alabama fans won't think much of them, and, and that's fine. But this was one of the better teams in the country, top 10 for sure, uh, top 12. Absolutely. Uh, and, and, and the first act of the play – uh, Kansas State sort of won, push us around a little bit. Deuce Vaughn, fantastic, fun player. The 88-yard run, sort of, you know, that, that was big. And Alabama's down 10-0 and, and, and assuredly lost the first act of the game. But the second act kind of started late in the first quarter, lasted all the way through early in the fourth quarter, a complete and total 45-3 to domination of a top-10 team highly reminiscent of the high points of the Saban era. While I won't compare today's performance to the 2010 Michigan State game that we talked a lot about in the lead up, you know, over the past month, we talked about that game a lot. Today was not the 2010 Michigan State game. But during that stretch, it was. It was absolutely that Michigan State game in the second act. The third act, which was short, and it was just done. I think when Alabama was playing out the string, that that wasn't that great. And 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 I hope Nick Saban brings it up in the in the post game meetings with the team that hey we didn't play to the standard that last six or eight minutes. And I know you guys were just eager to hit Bourbon Street with your with your with your buddies, but that that's you know, the last eight minutes was 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 not great. And that's how Kansas State scored, and Alabama didn't make many first downs. But uh, overall, Luke, Alabama kick the butt of the champions of the Big 12, who, by the way, produced a playoff team. And, and, and we're about to see what happens in Michigan TCU. We're recording this before Michigan TCU play, Luke. But what I think we're going to find is what me and you have said all along and what I've been very loud about is I don't care that Alabama disappointed a lot of Alabama fans. Alabama was one of the four best teams in college football this season. And, and I think Alabama – Step one was proving it against Kansas State, and step two is going to be when uh, TCU doesn't play, uh, when TCU doesn't look as good as Alabama in this game against Michigan, and I'm confident that's going to happen. I'm right there with you, um, and I want to get into that a little bit more after I tell you uh, about this message from the NHTSA. This specifically goes out to the gentleman who was presenting the trophy to, to Nick Saban a little bit earlier. Or um, me. Or me now. You're hanging out with some friends and putting back a few drinks. A few becomes a few too many. As the evening comes to an end and people start to head out, you think of calling a ride. But nah, you got it. You live nearby. You can make it home. It's no big deal, right? What are the odds you'll get pulled over anyway? Even if you do, what's the worst that can happen? Your insurance could go up. You could lose your license. You could lose your job. You could total your car. You could even kill someone or kill yourself. Everyone knows about the risks of driving drunk. The results are tragic and often deadly. However, that does not stop everyone from getting behind the wheel while under the influence. That's why police officials are out there right now looking for impaired drivers on our roads. They're there to save lives. So if you think you're okay to drive after a few drinks, you need to think again. Play it safe and plan ahead to get a ride. It only takes one mistake to change your life or someone else's life forever. Drive sober or get pulled over. Um, yeah, that's a couple I ain't of things. Anywhere. I'm just hanging out here at the house. Yeah. You're just hanging out there at Brad Denny Stadium. I, I, um, I, I listen to that PSA. I listen to that, that, uh, I listen close. I, I'm not, I'm going nowhere. I'm just going to watch these games and then catch a little Ron Seacrest. <laughs> Let me tell you, um, is it was kind of funny during this game because, uh, and look, we, we got a lot to talk about this. I mean, look, I love the yeah. fact that Isaiah Bond caught a touchdown. Kobe Prentice made an incredible play. Hey, they there you go. What a great way to rock in the new year with two of your young guys doing that. Kendrick Law. I thought Kendrick Law looked awesome for a guy who didn't catch a pass. That's so, so true. So true. So, um, but uh, and Jamarian Miller too. I thought he looked he, he looked like maybe the best running back we got it in, in that last little stretch. But um, what was kind of funny about this? I tweeted out that hey, number nine is the best player we we've, we've ever had. And some people were like, yeah, that's true. Some people were like, eh, you know, I don't know. But, yeah, he's really good. And some people were uh, – the locked-on Bulldogs, the Georgia guys, 
had to chime in because I guess they just got to bark at grown men at all times on any uh, social media or in person. And they were like, yeah, and he didn't even win a championship. And somebody said, well, he won an SEC title against y'all last year. And they were like, oh, well, hang the banner. And I was thinking, we do hang banners for SEC titles. That's what you do. But and it's and it's funny because I was like, and number one, he did win a national championship. Yes, he was a backup in 2020, but he he gets a ring. So and he also won a Heisman. He's also going to be number one pick in the draft. It's okay to say Bryce Young is the best player that we've ever had. And no, he didn't lead the team to a national championship. He would have. I'm full heart. I 100 believe that if Jameson Williams doesn't get hurt, but he did, and that's part of the game. So I accept it. I'm not taking anything away from Georgia. I'm just saying. Bryce Young's the best player we ever had. That's no offense to anybody else. Um, somebody else on our text chain threw out there, what, you know, do you think Bryce would have been better than Tua if he had had Tua's weapons? And my answer is definitively yes. Uh, yeah. Not just kind of yes. Like, yes, yes. And this is from a noted Tua lover. I gave my daughter an autographed Dolphins Tua jersey. For Christmas, that may, thing may not be worth much because he may never play again if he keeps getting concussions. But I, that's how much I love Tua. I love me some Tua Tungo Vailoa, but I love Bryce Young. And I, if Bryce Young were on that, you know, if he were the quarterback of the 2020 team, do we win a national championship and 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 win in the same kind of decisive fashion as we did with Matt Jones? No doubt, maybe even more decisive. Do it, do we win the national championship in 19? Um, or uh, in 18, 18 is probably a better example um, because 19, we had some injury issues, obviously. But 18, yeah, I think we do. I think we beat that Clemson team. Not, not because Tua didn't play well, but Tua did get sort of nicked up a couple of times, you know, and he, he was – remember he was hurt going in uh, the SEC – not going into the SEC title game, but after the SEC title game, then nicked up going into the Oklahoma game. And then he just sort of played not great against Clemson. Look, I'm telling you, I just think Bryce Young's the best player we've ever had. And not only that, he has a chance to be one of the best representatives we've ever had. So let's celebrate him. And so what if you call me a prisoner of the moment? I'm going to, I'm going to die on this hill. I promise you I am. Make a, a great point. I've never really thought about it before until this minute. But, hey, you know, I have my opinions. And direct, or some people may disagree with some of them. But you make a great point about 2020. I think one of the things I will always lash out about, Luke, is the Bryce didn't win a national championship thing as the starting quarterback. Well, here's a couple of reasons. In 2020, he wasn't the starting quarterback, who's the number two guy, and Alabama did win the national championship. It's the most speculative thing of all time to say, but I will tell you my opinion. If Bryce was Alabama's quarterback in 2020 as a true freshman, there would have been some uh, tough learning moments, maybe some ugly learning moments early. But I believe Alabama would have still won the national championship with Bryce as the quarterback instead of Mac Jones. I believe that. I also believe in 2020, John Mechie and Jamison Williams not been hurt. Or if just only one of them had been hurt, Alabama would have won the national championship in 2021. I believe both of those things are true. And if I'm only half right, then that knock on Bryce for not winning the national championship is silly. Uh, it had nothing to do with Bryce. It had to do with the fact he had Matt Jones in front of him as a freshman, had to do with injuries at wide receiver in year two. Bryce can't throw the ball to himself. He has to have high quality wide receivers to catch the ball to beat Georgia. He had them in the first game and he did. He didn't have them in the second game and he didn't. Jimmy, uh, let's also let's also say this yes. this year. It, drop balls. Yeah. Drop balls by Jai Hall and uh, Billingsley, too. They catch Jeez. those balls that Bryce threw to them. Alabama wins the game. Let's also say this. This year, yes, Bryce uh, Bryce lost two games. But, see, he put Alabama either in position to take the lead or put them in the lead late in the game, and our defense let us down or our kicking unit let us down. So, right. I mean, that – and, and I guess you can say, well, he should have given him a bigger lead. And I'm, I get so tired of the stale argument about, well, if you put anybody in there with all those five stars, no, that's not the case. That's not the case at all. I mean, we see it all too often. We see it with all – if that were the case, I mean, Ohio State, Georgia, and Alabama, and uh, I don't know, maybe 
USC would never lose. I mean, USC's got as many, they got some dudes at wide receiver. They got dudes at quarterback. Their dude won a Heisman. They still lose and they still look bad sometimes. Um, so I'm just saying, I think he's the best we've ever had. I'm going to die on that hill. Um, now I want to talk about a couple other guys near Isaiah Bond makes the touchdown catch. Uh, Kobe Prentice, man, I thought that was, that may have been the best play. His touchdown may have been the best play by a wide receiver this year. It's up there. I, I, mean, I, I, I He made a good play against Arkansas, you know, earlier yeah. this season too. Uh, yeah, I mean, the fact that it was just two freshman receivers making those plays and Jermaine Burton, uh, who's got a stay or go decision. That's an interesting thing about today too, Luca. We have stay or go decisions by Gibbs, by Ricks, by Burton, by Branch. Uh, we don't know Ooh. as as when we're recording this what any of them are going to do. But uh, Jermaine Burton, I hope – I think Burton proved himself. This was the Burton we thought we were getting, and, and, and I hope he he stays and and works on his game and gets even better. Uh, really impressed by Jermaine Burton today and down the stretch, not just today, but down the stretch. And it was um. By the way, I might have to deduct a few points from Kobe Prentice's great touchdown catch because, in my mind, he dropped that ball before he crossed the goal line. I don't have no problem saying that. And oh, I didn't you, even notice that. You can't do that. Stop doing that. That's the worst trend in football. There's no sense in doing it. Like, don't there's drop nothing, it. There's nothing Here. cool about. There's nothing cool about. No. Is, is there um, some sort of thing about? Hey, I'm going to be the guy that drops it at the exact millisecond. <laughs> I, I mean, barely yeah. scored, yo. No, yeah. don't do that. I'll be the best guy that's ever done it because I'll drop it at the exact mill. I mean. <laughs> What what is that? Why are you dropping okay. it at all? You want to do something cool? I'm I'm the I'm sure I'm the complete opposite of the guy who decides what's cool. But here's an idea. I'd rather you hold on the ball, circle the circle the goalpost, run to the opposing visitors thing and hand the ball to the other team's coach. Do that. Do Dude, that. That's if you're cool or do or that cooler than the guy who drops the ball. Do that or I would be fine if you held on to the ball so long, the official's like, I got to throw an unsportsmanlike penalty. I can't get the ball back. You know, 15 yards, unsportsmanlike, he won't give me the damn ball back. You know, I'd rather keep the ball and give it to your grandchildren 40 years later. Do that. That's cool. Like, don't drop the ball till you get home. Dropping it early is so (laughs) stupid. And we've seen it. Like, nothing good comes of it. And if they had reviewed it, and I'm telling you, it looked at the very least, it was simultaneous to crossing the goal line. But I wasn't the only one that saw that. By the way, I'm going to pat myself on the back here for a second. Oh, feel Coming free. out of halftime in a room full of my family, I said, they're going to onside kick this. And the reason they're going to onside kick it is because they know that if we get the ball, we're going to score and this thing's done. They This is the only chance they got. And they tried a very uh, – it was a pretty futile – uh, onside kick. I mean, it was kind of sad the way that onside kick went. But one guy, the guy, Bryce Young, MVP, I don't think there's any doubt. I'm going to tell you something. If you said, give me the non Bryce Young MVP and you don't say Brian Branch, don't Branch. ever watch football again. It's, Br- it's Branch. It's Branch by Miles. And I, I think Brian Branch today played the best game by an Alabama defender all season long. True. Agreed. I'm not saying he's our best defender. That's Will. And I know that Will didn't do much today. And 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 some people don't, you know, regard Will was our best player all season. That's true. That's why he won more awards than Meryl Streep has won in her career. Uh, but Brian Branch today played the best game uh, by an Alabama defender all season long. And, and I will throw a couple of shout outs here also. We played a great game on special teams today. We, we kept them backed up on kickoffs. I mean, on kickoffs, they couldn't get past a 10 because we covered it so well. Roydell Williams made a great recovery of the onside kick you referred to. Reichard made a kick. Uh, We punted okay, except one punt wasn't good, but the rest of the punts were fine. Uh, But Roydell Williams, Emmanuel Henderson, and Kendrick Law all played outstanding on special teams. Stuff like that doesn't get noticed in a blowout win, but they really did. And, uh, yeah, uh, good call on the – on the onside kick, and it it helped set up the second half blowout because that's what it was, and uh, you needed that if you're going to win the Big Twelve. 
<laughs> Jimmy, we're going to take a break. When we come back, I want to wrap up this Sugar Bowl. Okay. So, yeah, Brian Branch. Def- I mean, Brian Branch's stat line was ridiculous. I don't have it in front of me. He had like 14 or 15 tackles, like four tackles for a loss with a sack and a pick. I mean, yeah. that is crazy good. Now, all these um, CBS Sports, ESPN, they usually do an all-bowl team. Right now, I think you'd be hard-pressed to have an all-bowl team uh, to this point without having Brian Branch and and, uh, and Bryce Young on it. Yeah. So, I hope he comes back. but I know. I'm, I hope he comes back. But, man, today t- – Today may have done it. He played like – I mean, he played like a guy that's ready for the first round of the draft. And I almost hate saying that out loud because I want him to come back so bad. But I'm just being selfish. Uh, if, if, he's, if he is going to go in the first round, he should come out. No, I, and we're in agreement there, and I, I I don't want him to leave, but I understand. Um, let's see, a few other notes. Uh, Jameer Gibbs, I thought, played a great game. Again, yeah. this is another guy that I guess technically could come back, but he ain't coming back. I mean, I've seen him late in the first round, early he in the second. He needs to go, too. And I know he won't be a first-round pick. I've been saying, by the way, give me credit for when I'm, like, go on the on the other side. But I saw him in first-round mocks all during the season. I'm like, what NFL team takes a third down back in the first round? I mean, yeah. I, I don't believe he'll go in the first round, and he shouldn't. But I, a third down back that can go on day two, you need to go. He needs to go because NFL running backs have a short shelf life as is, and he's 190 pounds if that. Uh, he need, he needs to go because he won't play in the NFL for 12 years. I mean, just just go now and and get your get your money and and start work on your career. And and I am uh, pleased happy that Gibbs transferred to Alabama and we would not have had the success we had our 11 and two record in big 12 champs. I'm going to say it all week because I think it's funny and I think it's true because uh, we would have won the big 12. We could have played 20 big 12 games and won them all. Uh, so we're big 12 champs and uh, Jameer Gibbs is a big part of that. So thank you for transferring. Thank you for your contributions and now go enjoy the national football league. Uh, totally agree. And I agree with you on the Big 12. And look, here, that's another thing. Look, people keep pointing to the Texas game where Alabama barely escaped. And all that's true. I mean, we did barely escape. That's hard to. You mean, you mean the game that Alabama's yeah. on the road? That, that is game? the game we still won. And the it was. People, yeah, the people saw it as reasons that uh, Alabama shouldn't be in the playoff. I mean, we went on the te- on the road and beat a team that has like 40, four and five stars. Those yeah. guys. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember that game that we played so bad that we barely won. By the way, that might be the most hyped game going into uh, 2023, Texas at Alabama. That's going to be a banana scene. I mean, look, I know Ohio State, Ohio State travels to Notre Dame. That'll be interesting. Um, and there's some other good games out there that, you know, Florida travels to Utah, things like that. But but Alabama, Texas is going to be the story uh, heading into next year. Um, you know, that that is going to be something that people discuss at least immediately because I'm with you that I where TCU game is about to kick off. I think they're going to get beaten, and I think beaten rather convincingly. Um, maybe we're wrong, but I think the narrative is going to be, you know, Alabama should have been in there. And maybe so, maybe so. But we can't be super mad about this, considering we did lose two games. I don't care how we lost them. We lost two games. And I think this is – where I was very concerned at the beginning of this game, Jimmy, when it was 10 to nothing, I was like, no, y'all don't, y'all don't go out this way. Bryce, not like this. Will, not like this, you know. And then they they flipped the script. They turned it around and they they made it right. Um, Will did not have his best game. He did not have a game that would make you think he's an All-American. It looked like, in fact, Will was only out there sort of part-time. Um, yeah. When he was out there, I noticed him, but there's a reason. And beyond protecting Will, I just want to throw this in because I talk about it all the time on the Bama Insider message board. We came out first snap of the game with three defensive linemen and one outside linebacker and pretty much stayed in it most of the game. All season long, Luke, we've played a lot of nickel rabbit, which means in nickel we got two outside linebackers on the field. We've done that most of the season, but we didn't today much at all. Today we were in a lot of three defensive linemen, one outside linebacker, which meant on most every snap of the game, Will or Dallas was on the sideline. And that's why uh, yeah. Will played fewer snaps. In addition to the fact we probably told him we'd play him fewer snaps just to, you know, protect against injury. But th- that's why it wasn't just 
uh, well, we're trying to protect Will or Will didn't have a good game. We literally played most of the game with just one outside linebacker on the field. Two more things I want to bring up before we close the show out. Number one, shout out to Deontay Lawson. I thought he played magnificently. Now, yeah. I don't know what his stat line is, but he was around the ball a lot. He made uh, – He, he made limped the off the field. Hit. Always yeah. limping off the field, too. He played hurt and played well. He made the initial hit on uh, Deuce Vaughn, who I love watching play football, by the way. I love Deuce Vaughn. I just don't like him running like that against us. Um, but he made the initial hit, and then Brian Branch, I think, cleaned it up. Yeah. But that, that was the kind of play that you're like, if you can do that against Deuce Vaughn, you can do that against anybody. Because Deuce Vaughn is probably the hardest player in college football to tackle that gets the ball a lot. You know, there are other dudes that, that may not get the ball quite as much that are harder to tackle for whatever reason. Deuce Vaughn is very difficult to tackle because you obviously cannot find him, you know, unless he's got an air tag. I mean, because he's like – he's just like a small caricature of something just running around out there. Um, shoot, what was the other thing I was going to say? Do me, I don't remember. Well, Lawson played uh, really well. I thought several guys did. Uh, I mean, Kansas State's a good team. I, we, we, we need to remember that. And any post-game dissection of this can't be about uh, they were overrated. No, not really. Uh, I, I think they're I think they're the eighth best team, the tenth best team, the eleventh best team. That that's who they are, which is really good. Uh, I, I'm not going to live in a world where we only act like three college football teams are good. No, three college football teams are great. Then there's about twenty teams that are good. And Kansas State's definitely one of those teams. Uh, they're good. We had to play really well to win this game easily, and we did. Now, is this the greatest Alabama team of all time? No. Did Alabama deserve to be in the playoff? One last time, I'll say this again. Once Alabama lost their second game, deserve was gone. Alabama did not deserve to be in the playoff after that LSU loss. They should be out. Well, who's definitely in? George is in. Michigan's in because they were power five undefeated, looked great all year, won the big games. They're in. Well, who else do we have? Ohio State maybe deserved to be in because they were the only power five team along with TCU. Ohio State and TCU both had one loss. All the other power five conference champions had multiple losses. Ohio State and TCU only had one loss. So we'll put them in the maybes. But – they didn't deserve to be in. They didn't win their league uh, with one or less losses. So my point about Alabama being in is this. Alabama didn't deserve to be in, but only two teams did. Only Georgia and Michigan deserved to be in. They won their way in, slam dunk. Even aliens from another planet would say, put Georgia and Michigan in. My point is, okay, of all the maybes, I think Alabama's the best team. Of all the maybes... Alabama's the best. So put them in over the other maybes. And they didn't. Alabama isn't in, and I'm not mad because Alabama didn't deserve to be in. I don't think Alabama got hosed because they didn't deserve it. All along, and I still insist, Alabama was the best team of the maybes. And I think they proved it today. I'm right there with you, bud. Um, and now, look, we get – if we get – Saban will give everybody, I'm sure, 24 hours um, to go to Bourbon Street and then uh, to get home. And then, you know, you guys go to the NFL and you other guys come over here and let's start looking at some film and getting ready because, and start figuring out where you want to transfer to when I hint that you don't need to be here anymore. <laughs> hey, a lot of fun, a lot of fun stuff coming up these next 15 days, Luke. Next 15 days, right. juniors, who's staying, who's going. That's fun. Uh, who's Who else is getting to the portal? I, I predict. I'm just going to pick out a number. I'm not saying I got scoop. I'm just saying I think two more Alabama players will get in the portal before January 15th. Two more. Uh, who's Alabama going to sign out of the portal? And uh, and then all the focus in the late period on Cormani McLean. And by the way, uh, I, I'm not going to count on it, and I'm going to say all along no. But uh, it's very real that Alabama could sign Cormani McLean in the late period. Wow. That would be a monster thing to do. Jimmy, mm -hmm. it's been a fun year, bro. We'll be back uh, in 2023 with a new episode for you guys to. Uh, yeah, tomorrow. Yeah, tomorrow. tomorrow. <laughs> By that, we mean tomorrow. All right, buddy. Roll tide. Roll tide.